This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. Good morning. He's worthy of our praise. He's, he's worthy of our thanksgiving. He's our source of inspiration. He's it's our source of wisdom. He's the reason for our praise. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Today we'll continue our Rema experience, and today is day two. And we'll be looking at respond. Respond. How to respond to what God has spoken to you. How to respond. Rexpon is rooted in the principle of honor. When you honor God, you're quick to do his word. You're quick to do his will. If I don't value what God has spoken to me, I wouldn't be able to respond to what he has revealed to me. It it is the value you place on what God has spoken to you that determines your response. For some people, they try to reach out to most people when God has given them a word. So they try to tell this person, they try to tell that person, and before you realize, they start losing the, the gravity, the power behind that word. When you are sure that you have heard the voice of God, you are expected to respond according to the instruction you have received from God. Your respond will determine if you're going to have manifestation of what was revealed to you or what has been what God has told you. Your respond is important. I like us to go back to Genesis chapter twelve. We started with this scripture yesterday. In Genesis chapter 12, uh, thank you, Father. In Genesis chapter 12, Genesis chapter 12, and we're going to read from verse 1. In Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1. In Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1, he said, Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country. This was a word from God. And this word from God has the capacity to transform his life. And we know that his obedience has a lot to do with the future ahead of him. So now the Lord said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land I will show thee. Unto a land I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse him that curse thee. And indeed, all the families of the edge, of the family of the edge, shall be or will be blessed. Will be blessed. Indeed, all the family of the earth be blessed. Verse four says, "So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him." It was so that he responded. His response made all the difference. You know, it is good to hear the voice of God, but it's important to respond quickly to what you have heard. And sometimes we delay in what God has told us until we start losing focus of what God has revealed to us. And this is the case of so many people. The Lord gave them a word, I'd like you to do this. And they were excited about what God said to them. But a few hours later, the excitement is gone. The passion is gone because you need more than excitement to do the will of God. I want to say that again. I said, you need more than excitement, more than being excited to do the will of God. You need a revelation of understanding, a revelation of, of honor to be able to enforce what you have received. So I can receive a word from God, but my response is not consistent with what God is saying. My response may be slow. Maybe to me, I felt that I, I don't have to apply this word. I don't have to do this word. So 
response is important. If we don't respond at the right given time, the tendency to lose the benefit of that word spoken to us over there. And this is why it's important that you train yourself to respond in the light of the will of God. You train yourself to respond. God gave you a word and you're sure in your spirit that this is a word from God. It needs action. You need to get into action with that word, except you're not sure that it was the voice of God you heard. But if it is the voice of God, faith is an action in the direction of the will of God. Faith is an action in the direction of the will of God. Faith is an action in the direction of the will of God. So here we saw, so Abraham departed as the Lord have spoken unto him. There are key things that are important if we're going to respond accordingly, if we're going to respond in the direction of the will of God. The first thing we need to establish is the integrity of the voice of God the integrity of the voice of God, the integrity of his voice, the integrity of his voice, the integrity of his word, the integrity of his voice, the integrity of his word. When you have the revelation of the integrity of the voice of God, that simply means you've come to a place where you know this is God talking to me. You, you have that knowing in your spirit. And that knowing doesn't just come, doesn't just happen. You train yourself into knowing. You train yourself into knowing. It, it doesn't just happen. This is where a lot of people who walk into destruction and they can't tell and they die. They can walk into losses they don't know and they die, but they are believers. They are born again. So, but they have not trained themselves to know who is talking to them. They have not trained themselves. And, and that was why we have Romans 12, verse 2. In Romans 12, verse 2, it said, we should not be conformed to this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We should not be conformed to this world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So to the degree my mind is being renewed will determine how sensitive I'll be towards the thoughts and the direction and the leadership of the spirit. So it is important that you train your mind in the light of the word of God. And this is why we need to wake up with intention to read the word. We wake up with an expectation to fellowship with the word. Anytime you get into the Bible and you're reading the Bible, you are exposing yourself to supernatural environments, an environment where you can connect with God's thoughts, uh, an environment where you can connect with God's way of thinking, an environment where you can connect with God's way of doing things. So when you are in this Bible, when you open your Bible or you are in your tablet or on your phone, whatever uh, method in which you read your Bible, the, the most important thing is the living word that is there. And as you read that word, something is happening to you. There is something supernatural that happens to you. Sometimes you don't feel it. You know, so many people are trained to trust in how they feel. They, they want to feel it before they can believe it. If God had really spoken to me, why didn't my body shake? If God had really spoken to me, why didn't I see some uh, good people, my body? You know, some people always relate with the voice of God from external factors. That, that, is, that shouldn't be us. A New Testament believer needs to relax in the leadership of the Spirit. And that becomes a reality when you choose to stay with the Word of God. So renewing your mind with God's Word brings you to a place where you can understand the integrity of the voice of God that you are sure this thing I heard is the voice of God. What I heard is the voice of God. So it doesn't matter the, the next voice that may try to contradict it or how I feel or the opinions of people or the situation around me. It's not going to interrupt me because my mind has been trained in the knowledge of the will of God to rely on the leadership of the Spirit. My mind has been trained in the knowledge of the will of God to rely on the leadership of the Holy Spirit. At this point, I'm no longer unstable. 
You know, some people are unstable. They are not sure. Is it the voice of God? Is it not the voice of God? One of the governing factors that you consider whenever you hear a voice is to look at for the peace factor. Is to look at for the peace factor. If that peace factor is not there, it's not God. If the peace factor is not there, it is not God. If the peace factor in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, Romans 14, 17, he said, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The, the, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but he said it's righteousness. He said it is peace. It is joy in the Holy Ghost. So it is important we have the revelation of the voice of God, that when God speak, one thing you should look at for is peace, you should look at for righteousness, is what you're hearing, is it consistent with the person of Jesus, with his holiness, with his nature, is it consistent with the person of Jesus, does it bring peace, is there joy in the Holy Ghost, because when you hear the voice of God, there is joy, the joy factor is there, it comes with joy. Externally, you may be having some challenges, some difficulty, but the, the, the voice of God guarantees peace. God leads us with peace. And peace is very strategic when it comes to dealing with the Spirit of God, when it comes to judging the voices we're hearing. Because some people, have you ever heard someone said, God asked me to do this? And then there was so much disaster. There was so much crisis. There was so much issue. Yes, they may say it was God, but in them they started noticing it was not God. You see, this is why you need to understand the principle of patience. The principle of patience. Patience is not weakness. Patience is not weakness. This is why you have it in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. That you shall follow those who through faith and patience obtain the promise. You shall follow those who through faith and patience obtain the promise. So when you hear the voice of God, your response is important. Your response, how there is a delayed response, a delayed response, delayed obedience. You know, God told you to do this and you're looking for convenient time to do it. And because you are looking for convenient time to do it, especially if that word was for that season of your life, that God has, there are those that their destiny was connected to that word. And because of your delay, those people that are connected to that word God has spoken to you, they have moved into different areas of life. This is why sometimes people get stranded, become stranded. People lose the things they were supposed to have. God gave them a word to do something. They delayed for five years. Unknowing to them five years of delay, all the helpers, all those that are connected to that prophetic word, maybe they have moved into other areas of life, they have relocated, they have moved out, and now God spoke to me one year ago, maybe he said something to me now. And instead of me going ahead to do it right now, I, I have to say, okay, let me consider this, let me consider that, and 10 years. I was considering it in 10 years. And what happened? All those that were connected to that prophetic word. Sometimes when God gives you a word, there are people who are key players in that word. There are people whose destiny, who will bring support, who will bring love, who will help you to be able to achieve that word that God has given to you. So your delay can also lead to their disconnection from that word. Your delay can lead for, to disconnection because most of those people in that season that God spoke to you, God have strategically positioned them to be able to support you while they are pursuing their dream, while they are pursuing their vision, but your delay has put you in a position where you have to just labor alone and it becomes difficult. Then it looks like you never heard the voice of God. It looks like you never heard the voice of God, but it was the voice of God, but your response affected the potential and the capacity that that word of God carried because you never responded at the right giving time. You never responded at the right giving time. You know, several years ago when the Lord spoke to me, he said, oh, that's over five years ago, he said, the way church is going to be done in this century is going to change. And I, I wanted to go online to pastor. I wanted to go online to start a church. 
I wanted to go online to pastor. In the natural, I didn't have friends who are into doing ministry online in my city or around my country that were actively involved in doing churches online, doing running ministry online like you could do it in the uh, in the physical. So I didn't have any example I could look at when the Lord spoke to me. So uh, I went into it. I followed that word, got to Facebook, started doing the little I could do, and then God starts sending helpers. You see, when God gives you a word, your responsibility is to respond and not to question the integrity of that word. And sometimes people begin to question the word of God until a point they lose all the divine connections connected to that word. This is why you will obey God at their own time and they don't see the fruit and they say, man, you know, the Lord spoke to me. I'm doing what the Lord said, but this one is not working out. It's not true. The truth of it is that when he asked them to do it was 10 years ago, was five years ago, was six years ago, was seven years ago. This morning I was talking to a friend on the phone and he has had this challenge at any time he's pursuing his vision of what God called him to do and he run into a position, he will abandon it and relocate. He will abandon it and relocate. Things like that. Whenever he comes across crises or challenges, he walks away. So this morning, the Lord was talking to me to talk to him about stability, being stable. Stability comes from understanding. Unstable people don't attract investors. When people know you are not stable, they cannot consistently support you because they know that their support will not really uh, produce the kind of fruit they want to receive as a feedback. How can someone start supporting you? You said, God asked you to do this business or God asked you to do this ministry or whatever, and they start supporting you, standing with you, and then you come back and tell them, God didn't ask me to do it anymore. All their funds, all their resources, everything is gone. And four or five years later, you showed up again and said, the Lord said I should do this again. And then you started it all over again. People started coming. And after a while, you shut it down. Inconsistency is not a mark of strength. It's a proof of confusion. It's a sign that this person is confused. And let me say this to you, just because you're in the will of God does not exonerate you from challenges. You know, sometimes when people see challenges, they see your position, they felt that it, this is not the will of God. If it is the will of God, why should I go through that storm? Why should I go through? Jesus was in the will of God and they nailed him to the cross. Jesus was in the will of God. Jesus was obeying God. Jesus was doing miracles. Jesus walked on the sea. He fed 5,000 people. Jesus cleansed the lepers. But Jesus, in the will of God, was nailed to the cross. I don't know where people get this idea from, that if you're in the will of God, you're not going to see temptation. You're not going to see challenges. Sometimes it amazes me how some preachers could teach things like that. And knowing to you, uh, you, you have no clue that the enemy will come with strategy, the strategy of frustration. Maybe God asked you to do something and the attendance was very poor. Because every time you come, it's the same number of people. Every time you come, it's the same number of people. And then you begin to ask yourself this question, do you show sure we're doing the will of God? A lot of questions are quick to ask that because they, their faith is based on success. If they have success in that area, they feel God is in it. But unknown to them that sometime before the success, there is a storm. There is opposition. There is challenges. So they, they said, if God is in it, why are you going through this? You know, several years ago, someone called me, was talking to me, said, Apostle, do you show God has called into ministry? Because there was nothing around me in the natural that the person could see as a mark of success. So the person asked me, do you show sure if God has called you into ministry? Because people always validate your ministry based on material things. This is how church people think. Majority of church people, 85% of Christians consider success based on material manifestation. So if you are not driving a good car, you're not living in a good house, you're, you're not having things external to validate your calling, they feel that God did not call you because if God called you, these things are supposed to be around you or knowing to them that Jesus did not build a house. Jesus, I've never read a scripture where it said that Jesus built a house. 
I never read a scripture. I've never read a scripture where it said that Jesus built a place of worship. I've never read that. I've never read that. You see, we need to begin to understand that the kingdom is different from the life in the flesh. We need to understand this fact. This is why obeying God is the foundation for effective ministry. Your level of obedience will determine the level of influence you're going to command. Your level of obedience will determine the level of influence you're going to command. So it is important you respond. And your response will be sustained by decision. Your response will be, will be sustained by decision. Sometimes in the ministry, people or in business or in relationship, and maybe things are not working according to the expectation. So they said, is it God? Is God in this? We're not having much result. We're not having this. And then we'll have this tendency to just abandon it, to, then to focus on what is working. Sometimes you need to ask yourself this question. If God have asked you to do it, also hear from him if he wants you to shut it down. You don't shut it down because you felt the view has not increased or the number of people have not increased or the finances have not increased or you don't have much people supporting you and then you just come one day and you shut it down. A lot of people shut destinies down when they were very close to manifestation. A lot of people shut down businesses down, marriages down, a relationship done when they were very close to the manifestation of what they were believing God for. They walked away too soon. They walked away too soon. There are a lot of people, God will give them a prophetic word. This is what I'm going to do in your life. And maybe five years has passed or maybe 10 years has passed. And then they begin to question, oh, if it is really God, why haven't this happened to me? Abraham believed God for Isaac for 25 years. For 25 years, Abraham believed God for Isaac. For 25 years, God showed the dream to Joseph of what he was going to do in his life. It took more than 13 years. Read scriptures. You will notice there is a pattern of process. There is a pattern of operation. There are how God work on people. He told David, I've made you a king. He brought him. Uh, Samuel came and anointed him a king. But that was not the week that David became the sat on the throne because Saul was still there. There was so much issue, but there was a process to it. If you're running from process, you are running from progress. If you're running from process, the process of your purpose, you are also distancing yourself from the progress that will proceed from the process. That's what you're doing. Because sometimes God will give you a word and nobody said amen to it. Don't drop the word in your heart. Don't make confirmation your focus. Make peace your focus. Don't make confirmation your focus. Oh, nobody's giving me a confirmation that what I heard was the voice of. Don't make confirmation your focus. Make peace your focus. Peace is the focus, not confirmation. Because confirmation comes from external factors, other people. Other people come, okay, yes, that thing you told me is true. The Lord have agreed. The Lord told me it's true. No, no, I, I can't live my life by you agreeing with me. I can't live that way. I should be able to hear from God and then respond. Who gave Abraham confirmation? Who gave him confirmation? There was no one in the natural that gave Abraham confirmation that the voice he had was the voice of God. This man has grown in understanding and he understood that this is the word of God. He understood that this is the word of God. He stayed with it. He was not running around town, around town and looking for the prophet that is going to confirm what he had, like most of us do today. We'll run around from place to place, or from broadcast to broadcast. Who is going to confirm what the Lord has spoken to me? Who is going to confirm? So we, we live a life of external factors where we, if we don't get confirmation, because the reason for confirmation is to feed your flesh. That's the reason for confirmation. Most of the confirmation is for you to feel okay in the flesh, then you now can step up. No, that's not the way of the Spirit. Confirmation is not bad, but if you make it your focus, sometimes you may lose out. Sometimes God is talking to you, but most people have not heard what he's saying to you. And it is your responsibility to do the application of what the Spirit of God has revealed to you. 
You can't be running around looking for confirmation, looking for somebody that will confirm things when you already know that this is what God is asking you to do. This is what the word of the Lord has come to you to do. Then you put your attention and your focus on it. Get to work with the word you have received. Get to work with the word you have received. Get to work with the word you have received. You have received a word from God. Go to work with that word. Go ahead and work the word. It is better you are alone obeying God than to be scared that you don't have anyone supporting you and then you abandon the vision. You abandon abandon the instruction, you allow your feeling to rob you the joy of continuity. And Abraham, look at this scripture here in Genesis chapter 12, verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Complete obedience is the foundation for unlocking supernatural help. I want to say that again. I said complete obedience is the foundation for unlocking supernatural help. One of the ways you unlock supernatural help is when you yield yourself in the place of obedience. What is your obedience going to do? Your obedience puts your faith on motion. One of the keys to putting your faith on motion is to respond. Obedience puts your faith on motion. That heart of obedience, I'm going to do what the Lord has said to me. I don't care what has happened. I'm going to just obey the voice of the Lord. Obedience puts your faith on motion. And this is very strategic that you can't be running around all the place looking for confirmation. This prophet said this, that prophet said that, this person said this. A lot of people have notes of prophetic word, notes of what has been said, but they're doing nothing about it. They're doing nothing about what God has spoken to them. And time is going, years is going. Uh, this, this is the month of June. In the next six months from now, or, or, or six months, five days from now, we're going to say Happy New Year to 2021. We know the pandemic is here. We know there are economic crises. But the most important thing is to focus our energy on God's word. There is a synergy that comes from the word of God that helps you to accelerate the vision that God has given to you. There is a synergy that comes from God's word. You just feel this drive, this strength. You know, things just happen and you're, you're, you're so worried at a different dimension. Because you responded to that word, your response is important. Your response is important. You cannot sit down and say, well, let me uh, wait for it to happen. Okay, no, faith is action. Faith is action. Faith is action. Faith is action in the direction of the will of God. And what is the will of God? What God has spoken to you. The will of God is that word you have received from God. That is the will of God. So you can't just give up because you are, you are having some challenges, you're having some tough time, and God gave you a word. Now you're doubting that word. Is it going to happen to me? When is it going to come to pass? Do you sure it's a word from God? Do you sure it's going to happen? A lot of people have bought the rima word they received. They have bought it. They, there was a miscarriage of the rima word. You know what? Some women can have miscarriage. You know, some women can experience abortion, can do abortion. All of those are process of evacuating the baby, abortion, evacuate baby, uh, miscarriage, evacuate the baby. Those things take the baby off the womb. It's a process of losing a child. The same same way people could have bought babies or have a miscarriage, that same way it can happen to the word of God you have received. There can be an abortion of God's word. The word just flushed out in the person's spirit. The word just flushed out. They lost that word that God gave to them. That word that the spirit of God put in their heart. They lost that word. Why? Because they are allowing some external factors to affect how they see and the things they do. When God gives you a word, he expects action. Faith is action in the direction of the will of God. So here we already said, so Abraham departed. So we're looking at obedience. Obedience to what you have heard. It takes decision to obey. It takes decision to obey what you have heard.
because the flesh is trying to interrupt the process of revelation the flesh is trying to interrupt the process of growth so in the flesh you don't feel like carrying out that instruction the lord gave to you your flesh is asking for it your flesh is saying no 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 this is not what we want to do this is not what i want to do your flesh is calling for that your flesh is is calling for something and, and this is why you need to stay with the word of god this is why you need to stay with God's word as you can flourish in the things of the spirit. You need to stay with God's word as you can flourish in the things of the spirit. So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken unto him and Lot went with him. That's another distraction. That's not what I want to talk about today. But let me just say something about this. Be careful of those who join you after God has spoken to you. Be careful of those you open the door to as a result of the voice of God you have heard. There are so many people that couldn't continue in their vision, that couldn't continue in their purpose because they carried the wrong people. And those people started bringing strife. You know, one of the things that could extract you from the pursuit of purpose is strife and contention. Strive and when people start striving and contending, it creates confusion, it drains mentally, emotionally, it can drain you mentally when you're having a quarrel, when you're having a fight. You know, those things are demonic, that is why it drains people emotionally. When you have a fight with your wife, a fight with your husband, a fight with a friend, a fight, you know, you are just exchanging words. Those things drain people emotionally. And this is why it's important that after God has spoken to you, you need to judge who is coming in and who is not part of my word. And Lot, look at it, Bible said, and Lot went with him and Abraham was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Aram. Aram. You know, he departed, you know, uh, he was 75 years old when he departed. 75 years old from Haram. He was 75 years old. At 75, what is what is going to happen to his life? At 75 is when people start retiring from life. It's when most people begin to sit on their rocking chairs and said, life is over. I've lived my life. But at 75, God started a destiny with a man. At 75, a man received a prophetic word that revealed his purpose to him. This means that your age is not a factor when it comes to the things God has called you to do. Your age is not a factor. And there are a lot of people today that look at their age and say, oh my God, I'm 50 years old. I'm 45 years old. I'm 60 years old. I'm 70 years old. What am I going to be able to do the things God has called me to do? And then they begin to talk against themselves. They begin to uh, make utterance or comments that are not in line with the word of God. When God has spoken to you, be careful not to open the door to strive to contention, you know, to people who have this uh, tendency to create confusion. Someone can be very gifted, but if they have potential to create confusion, I don't think you need them in your camp. Someone can be highly gifted, but if they all they do is to create strife and contention and confusion, I think you need to let them go out because strife and contention and confusion will slow down the progression of a vision. It will slow down the progression of a vision. And here we saw how Abraham, Lot followed him. Abraham did not invite him from the scripture we read. He said, and Lot went with him. We didn't know whether Abraham asked Lot to join him or Lot saw him and said, I'm going with you, sir. Let's go together. You know, I don't know what happened. If either, if Abraham invited him, or Lot just joined him. You know, here we saw, he said, and, and Lot went with him. And Lot went with him. So it is important we know who is going with us. Because the voice of God we have heard is for us. But whoever that is going to connect with us must align themselves with that voice of God. Because if they don't align themselves with that voice of God, the tendency for there to be confusion, to be stress and pressure. This is where a lot of people lost out on what God spoke to them. 
God gave them a word and then someone came with pressure. Someone came with confusion. There was crisis and that was how that ministry was shut down. I've seen churches shut down by strife. I've seen ministries, businesses shut down because there was a conflict between the people involved and they, they, they lack the wisdom to manage the crisis, they lack the wisdom to handle their differences, they lack the wisdom to handle their inabilities and their limitation and weakness, and that led to shutting down the organization. And that is not good because strive is a presence of the enemy. One of the one of the things you need to you, you have to know when Satan is around, when people are striving, when people want to quarrel, when people want to contend, that is a manifestation of satanic presence. Sometimes we think, oh, it's just emotional. Oh, it's just emotional. No, sometimes it's not emotional. It's a manifestation of a demonic presence, confusion, strife, contention, uh, hatred, you know, uh, gossip. All of those things are satanic activities. Uh, the purpose of those activities is to create confusion, is to create division, is to create strife, is to create segregation, is to cause problem that people begin to lose the synergy of their unity, the synergy of their vision, and then they start moving in a wrong direction. This is why it's important in obeying God, watch who comes in, watch who you allow into your life. There are a lot of people today that said, I regret of introducing this person to that person. I regret of this, I regret of that, because in the natural, they, they, they never judge who they were dealing with. You know, when you meet someone, you need to check out the fruits in their lives, not just how gifted they are. You need to check out the fruits in their life. You need to check that you can't be carried away. Oh, this guy's an apostle. Oh, this lady's an apostle. Oh, this lady's a prophet. Oh, this, you know, that's, that shouldn't be what should be moving you. You, you should watch the fruits. You should watch what kind of fruit comes out of them. Because the scripture said, by their fruit we shall know them. So if you are going to respond to the voice of God, you must cultivate the principle of obedience. Obeying at the right given time. It's so important that you understand this fact that obedience doesn't just happen. You cultivate attitude of obedience. You cultivate the heart of obedience where you understand the scripture. Watch, let's go to Matthew Gospel. In Matthew Gospel chapter 6. Uh, Matthew Gospel chapter 6. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Matthew Gospel chapter 6. Uh, verse 33. I just, there's 33. Uh, I want to look at this. No. Okay, before we go to 33, let me just show you this. In that same scripture, let, let, let's let's see this. Let's see Matthew Gospel, chapter six, vex, vex, chapter six, vex twenty-one. It said, "For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. For where your treasure is, Matthew Gospel, chapter six, vex uh, twenty-one. Um, I will also like to read it from the Passion Translation." From the Passion Translation. Thank you, Father. Okay. In Matthew Gospel, chapter 6, verse 20. Okay, let, 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 let's read from verse 21. It says, uh, okay, from verse 20. Let me read it from verse 20. Maybe we can get some insight. Matthew Gospel 6, verse 20 from the Passion Translation. It said, instead of stockpile, heavenly treasures for yourself that cannot be stolen, and will not will never rust decay or lose their value for your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure i like this i like the way the passion translation puts it we're reading matthew chapter 6 verse 21 he said for your heart for your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure, your heart. If that word of God that came to you, you value it as a treasure, you, you will always pursue that word. I like the way, I like the way it was being rend the, the rendering here. He said, for your heart will always pursue what you value 
as your treasure. What you value as your treasure. Your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. For your heart will always, your heart will always, your heart will always, your human spirit will always pursue what you value as your treasure. And here we saw in verse 22, from the verse 22, Matthew 6, 22, it said from the, from the KJV translation, the KJV, the old King James said, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy, your eyes be single, thy whole body will be full of light. Your whole body, if your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. So this is the, the principle of focus being established here. The principle of focus, to focus on that word you receive from God. That word you got from God. You focus your energy on that word you receive. If your eye is single, it's the, if the, look at it here, it said, the, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore the eye be single, your eye being single. You know, this is one of the keys to the application of what you have had if your eye be single you, you you're going to move in the direction of his will if your eye is single because the reason for this is to stay off distraction is to stay off confusion is to stay off any situation with capacity to distract you from focusing your energy on what matters most and here he said from the Passion Translation, it said, the eyes of your spirits allow revelation, light to enter into your being. If you, if, if your heart is uncoded, on, 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 if your heart is unclouded, is unclouded, the light flawed. If your heart is unclouded, he said, your eyes flawed. He said, the light, sorry, the light floods. So God is saying here to us, uncloud everything. Uncloud it. If your heart is unclouded, you know, and this is so important that sometimes people allow a lot of things to just come into their mind. They just allow every situation to just come after them, you know. They just open the door, this trouble, this situation, this problem, these circumstances just come unclouded. If your heart is unclouded, there are things to drop. There are things that we, we, we need to put aside as we can pursue the vision that God has given to us. There are things we, 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 we need to say, this, this is not going to distract me. I'll read it again. He said, the eyes of your spirit allow revelation, light to enter into your being. If your heart is unclouded, 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 the light floods in. If your heart is unclouded, the light floods in. The light floods in. So if, if my heart is having so many things, the light can come in. Obedience is a decision. And when you obey the Lord on time, at the right given time, you will see the manifestation of the blessing. It's not just hearing, but it's responding. You may have heard the voice of God and several things the Holy Spirit have said to you, but it's time to walk that word. It is time to act on it. And that's a prophetic word for you today. Act on what you have heard. Act on that word of God you have heard. Act on it. You know, act on that word you have heard. You go back and act on it. And don't just say, well, 
is it really going to happen? Is this word going to really come to pass? Am I really going to have supernatural success? Am I really going to have supernatural victory? It is time to make that word you have received from God the foundation of your operation. It is time to go back to those notes, to those rhema words, to those prophetic words, and remind yourself what the Spirit of God have revealed to you and, and focus your energy. You know, sometimes we can easily forget, and this is why we need to do ourselves a reminder. We need to do ourselves a reminder of what we should expect, what we should believe, and how we should respond. And that's what the Holy Ghost is saying right now to us. Be quick to obey. Be quick to respond. Don't delay your obedience. A delayed obedience is not obedience. If you a delayed obedience is not obedience. If you finally did it, but you never did it at the time you're supposed to do it, that's not obedience. And, and God rewards obedience in the direction of his will. All oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and bless the Lord this morning. This is Rema Experience Day 2. And wherever platform you're watching from, we're glad you did. I just wanted to give God praise this morning. Go ahead and bless him this morning. Go ahead and thank him. Ask him that his word for your life will become your focus. I want to talk to God this morning that the word you have received from him, that you're going to walk that world. You're not going to be running around from place to place looking for confirmation, looking for who will agree with you, but you should be able to cultivate an understanding of the voice of God and then run in the direction of that voice. Go ahead and talk to him today. Lord, we thank you this morning that your voice will become the center focus of our life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lamb of God. Thank you, El Shaddai. Thank you, the God who is more than enough. We receive your engrafted word that have capacity and potential to empower us to function in the direction of the will of God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lamb of God. We'll pray for everyone here that has been struggling to obey the voice of God for their life, for their finances, for their business, for their marriage, for their relationship. Receive strength to respond to the will of God. Receive strength to respond to God's instruction, God's counsel, the will of God, the purpose of God, the agenda of heaven. Receive which the maliga protosha karinga in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're watching this broadcast, maybe you're on the Zoom platform or you're on Facebook and whatever platform you're watching us today and you are not born again, I'd like you to say this after me. If, you're, if you know you're not sure of your salvation, you're not born again, you, you're not sure if Jesus comes today, you'll make it to heaven. You're not sure of your salvation and you want to receive Jesus as the Lord of your life. The greatest thing that can ever happen to you is not to have money. Money is good. It's not to have a house. House is good. It's to have relationship with Jesus. That is the greatest thing that could ever happen. It's not a degree from university. It's not marriage. It's not children. The greatest thing that can ever happen in your life is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. So if you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray this prayer with us, it means you're born again, and the Spirit of God will lead you from this day forward. So I want